cheese knife. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the cheese knife. We'll talk about its appearance and purpose, its placement on the setting, and as always, which replacement cutlery to use if you don't have a cheese knife. So let's start with appearance and purpose. So, which knife is it? As the name suggests, the cheese knife, this one, is used during the cheese course. You'll notice it has a rather unique shape. It has a thin, sometimes curved blade and fork-like spokes at the end of the knife. The thin blade is to finely slice the cheese, as well as any accompaniments served with the cheese, such as grapes or figs. It also has fork-like spokes at the end to pick up the slices of cheese or accompaniments and place them onto a biscuit or bread. Let's take a look at where the cheese knife is placed on the setting. When the cheese is served with bread or a cracker, the cheese knife is usually not paired with a fork since the cheese and crackers can be eaten elegantly. On the other hand, the cheese knife is often paired with a starter fork if the cheese is enjoyed without a biscuit. As you can imagine, the guest doesn't want to stick the knife or their fingers into their mouth. Rather, the starter fork can be used. And so, because it is paired with a fork, placing the cheese knife follows the usual rule. When a knife is paired with a fork, the knife is placed on the right hand side of the setting. Finally, replacement cutlery. If your establishment does not have cheese knives, a starter knife also works well. However, if this is the case, be sure to place a starter fork down too, because a starter knife doesn't have the prongs that the cheese knife does. This will allow the guest to pick up both cheese and preserves with the starter fork. Why do you think starter cutlery is the best substitute? The reason why starter cutlery is used as a substitute for a cheese knife is because the items are small and delicate enough to accompany a cheese course, which is generally a lighter course. So, to summarize, you now know the appearance and purpose of the cheese knife, its placement on the table setting, and which replacement cutlery to use if you don't have cheese knives at your establishment. Well done, and good luck putting your knowledge into practice. The Oyster Fork In this lesson, we'll look at a dainty little piece of cutlery called the Oyster Fork. We'll be looking at the appearance and purpose of the Oyster Fork. Placement Where to place it on the setting. And Replacement Cutlery What to do if you don't have an Oyster Fork available. Let's start with the appearance and purpose. The oyster fork is used when the guest is enjoying oysters. This is one of the smallest forks you will ever see. It has three short, wide prongs which can be slid under the flesh of the oyster and used to cut the oyster out of its shell for the guest to enjoy. The oyster fork can also be used to squeeze the lemon or lime juice onto the oyster by piercing the lemon or lime. Now let's look at the placement. The oyster fork is an unusual piece of cutlery, but its placement makes sense when you know how the guest will use it. When eating oysters, the fork does most of the work. The oyster shell is held in the left hand, while the fork to lift the oyster from the shell in the right hand. This means that the oyster fork is used on its own. There's no oyster knife. And so the oyster fork doesn't follow the rule of a paired set of knives and forks. Unlike most forks, the oyster fork is placed on the right hand side of the setting, the side that the guest will hold it. Also, oysters are usually served as a starter, so the fork is set on the outside of the other cutlery. Lastly, let's finish off with the replacement for the oyster fork. If you don't have oyster forks at your establishment, Use the next smallest fork available, 
which may be a snail fork or a starter fork. To summarize, you should now know the following, the appearance and purpose of the oyster fork, where to place it on the table, and what to do if you don't have one. Well done if you could remember all three. If not, have a quick rewatch of the lesson to pick up anything you may have missed.